All right, welcome to another episode of the Worst of the Best podcast. I'm your host, and with me, as per usual, not as always, but as per usual, is my brother, Jason. Jason, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, thanks, Ryan. How are you? Doing well. It goes without saying, Jason, at the time it's recording, there's been a lot... Okay, I want to say, before I say this, before yes, yeah, before we chose this, or sorry, before the news came out of certain events, we chose this topic before things started trending on Twitter and stuff. We chose... This is about three weeks ago. Yeah. We've tried to record and our schedules haven't lined up perfectly. This is a complete coincidence <laughs> that we're talking about this right now. Less people think that we're trying to uh, attach the, <laughs> our podcast for more listeners to the phenomenon right now of UFOs is what I'm saying. So yeah, there has... Isn't it weird, Jason, that we live in a time right now where UFO trending and talk, and it's even on like mainstream news and government officials saying, yeah, we don't know where this stuff is coming from. It's it's almost blasé. <laughs> like, if we were teenagers, we would have been losing our minds. It, it is a very interesting response. I think people are hesitant due to the last few years that we've been living through. So I think some people might be hesitant to any type of official narrative as to what we're experiencing. Right. And so we're just like, okay, what's next? And right. what are you going to save us from next? Is it, uh, is it this a legit UFO thing? Is this another country trying to attack us? Is this another psyops? Right. It could be any number of questions as to what we're going to be experiencing. So, um, yeah. So on that top of a course of, you know, on, identified flying objects or whatever the government's calling them. I forget what they called it. Just we don't know what they are in the sky objects that we've shot down, except for that big balloon. We're not doing UFOs per se. We're kind of going to talk about the people that drive the UFOs <laughs> and their actual encounters with human beings. So these are alien encounters that have interesting or unusual stories as most encounters would we've curated the internet and we've gone out there and we try to find the best <laughs> the, the best stories that are out there regarding uh ufo encounters and it wasn't until the list was completed jason i said to jason i said you know what every single story we have is a female story or given by a female i don't know <laughs> i don't know why that is uh, uh, i i have a theory at least with one person <laughs> well there's a few there's a few and <laughs> Maybe we'll have to do a part two where we, you know, specifically look for, of course, men have been <laughs> abducted and uh, prodded and poked by aliens. Now, Jason, do you have any uh, alien stories of your own? Do you have any encounters or anything you'd like to share with the public? I don't think I do. Now, I know you do. I, I don't think I do. I think, um, no. Do you remember when I had a cyst in my cheek right here? Yeah, I had a cyst right here, just like it was yeah. right, it's right here. I, yeah. I still, I sometimes I still play with it because it used to be like a ball right here, and we were semi convinced that it was an alien implant. That well, you were very semi convinced. Well, I mean, well, crazy things have happened according to the stories that we're going to share with you today. Yeah. Uh, Do you not believe it's uh, an implant anymore? No, I saw it after the oh, doctor. You, doctor you, Smith took it out, and <laughs> I looked at it. It was a, it was a, a cyst. It was a cyst. It was an oily. Aww. Pocket of guck. What was what was your age? So we have context for the story, old? for the the cyst. Thinking oh, it oh, was. Oh, oh, I was like fifteen to seventeen, that late teens. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I remember I had to put a band aid on there after the surgery, and I was so embarrassed that my face was marred with a little stitch and band aid. Okay. Anyway, so the story that I actually had before we get into these other encounters was I was in the crib. So yeah, you're thinking right away. You're thinking, well, Ryan, how could you have a memory about the crib? But there are legit stories and encounters out there with people who remember being infants, things that happened to them, especially tragic or crazy things. So I do have an early childhood memory, probably under the age of two because I was still in a crib. This is a real memory. Now, is it a real false memory or a false real memory, however you want to say it? Like the memory is real, but what was happening around me could be obviously false. And the reason why I know this memory is real too, because I used to tell it to mom and I shared it with her when I was able to share it with her. And then when I eventually saw the grays or whatever presented on TV and, and, and what have you. It wasn't until then I realized, oh, that's what my brain was trying to think of what I saw. So I know it's a little bit crazy, but I tell you the story is real. Whether I, what I saw was real, I don't know. So I'm, I'm under two, so I don't know what would have influenced me to see what I saw at that age. Uh, because in 1977, 78, there was no film or TV show that I would have watched 
that would have made me, or image that I would have seen. Okay. So what it was, I was in my crib and I woke up to three to four individuals around my crib. It was dark in the room and they were tall and slender and white. I, I don't remember the conversations that they were having, but I remember there was no sound, but I recall that they were talking. I understood them even as a young infant. I understood they were talking about me. And I don't know why I knew that, but that was always, again, a memory I have. <laughs> I know it's crazy, but this is a memory I have where there's, I don't know why it's in my head, but it's there. It's clear as day right now. They were standing around the crib and they were talking about me. And I wasn't scared in the sense, I because I had nothing to relate these things to. For all I knew, these creatures existed on the world. I'm two years old, under two. For all I know, this is what exists in this world earth that I live on. I just never, you know, there's a day that you'll see a giraffe for the first time, right? Or a bear. Like this to me could have been whatever in my room. I didn't know what they were. I had no context for this. They were talking about me. I knew that much, but I was afraid enough that I turned my back on them. Like I saw them and I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I, so I just turned my back and then I'll never forget the feeling that one of them reached into the crib, obviously, and it touched my backside. I'll never forget the back of my I think it was just in a diaper, no shirt on. And my backside was touched. And it scared whatever a baby could feel fear of. It scared the crud out of me at that age of being touched by these things. Again, nothing was, I wasn't harmed. I just knew that I was being observed. I don't know what the word is. I just, I was talked about like you would talk about watching a rat in a maze. So anyways, that is a real memory I have. Again, it could just be in the, the primitive brain playing tricks on a baby. I don't know. Maybe something that was in my formula. <laughs> I don't know. So that's a real story. Is it a real encounter? Like if mom and dad were to walk in at that moment or whoever or whatever, what would they have seen? I don't know. Well, the way you describe it is very consistent through my whole lifetime. It sounds very reasonable as any encounter that I've heard other people explain that they've gone through if not even more reasonable, like it comes across like as a reasonable, at least a solid memory. You're recollecting something. I, yeah. I hope it was aliens. Yeah, you That'd never know. Cool. Well, like I said, I didn't have any reference of what these things were. I thought they were just yeah, yeah. tall, skinny people in my room. It wasn't until again, like TV shows, whatever, X-Files, I would have been, whatever, maybe the Close Encounters of the Third Kind. That when I saw them portrayed in Hollywood, these I was like, oh my goodness, I think that's what I saw. Though I don't remember the faces, but I just remember the, the these bodies, very very slim and thin. Anyways, but I remember a finger touching my back. It was a it was a digit, <laughs> a digit. Anyways, so <laughs> an alien digit. Now I share that story because we're going to listen to some encounters, some from the actual people, some from dramatic recreations on, um, and then some of them I will say are. Look, I get there. Here's the problem, or here's this is the kind of a good bad problem is that some of these account or stories are insane, but so is mine, and so we don't know these people, and they seem genuine or genuine about their experience. But is this some of them are kind of funny, and the way they present them are funny? So I'm, we're gonna have a little bit of fun with it. It's funny when you read the YouTube comments under each story, even if you don't believe their story. There's just hundreds of comments of people sharing their story. Either everyone is me, meaning they're wrong, their memory is just wrong, but why? Why does everyone have this memory or story to share? There's no reason for me to share my story because there's, no, there's no real big payoff other than the fact that that's a memory I have. And I, okay, so we're gonna go through this. So that's kind of our intro. So again, these are alien encounters with females, not that it matters, but they're all women that are unusual or different. Maybe you haven't heard these. Maybe some of these you have heard. There's a couple that are, kind of funny and we'll have a kick out of it and so at the end of the episode jason and i independent of each other we don't know which story we think is the worst now what we think the worst should be this is how i looked at it jay tell me if you agree the worst would be if you had to convince somebody that an alien story or an encounter was true like this which one is the least believable story convincing? the least convincing yeah so which is the worst story? Which one is like, okay, I don't buy that at all. And I think there's a few that I don't quite buy or I'm not too sure about. And they're not very strong pieces of stories, I think. I'm sure there's better ones out there on Reddit and what have you. But this is what we found. So at the end of the day, which one do we think is the least convincing story? Whether it was the story itself or how it was presented. and Because there is one story that when we get to it, I'm pretty legit. I think it's pretty legit because of the source too. And we'll get to that. Okay. You want to introduce this uh, lovely woman? Yeah. Bettina Rodriguez Aguilera. So she um, lives out in Florida. She was an educator, entrepreneur, community activist in Florida. Always connected with her diverse group of people. From when I 
listen to her on YouTube, it sounds like maybe she's Spanish. Yes. Rodriguez. She's in Florida, you know. but she probably represents a Spanish community where she is, yeah. Sure. So she even ran for a Republican primary um, to represent Florida's 27th congressional district. With so much support from the people, some questioned if the interview she gives in 2009 about an alien encounter risked her election. Regardless, Rodriguez Aguilera never regretted or changed what occurred during the encounter. She claimed that at seven years old, she was taken aboard a round spaceship. She recalled interacting with tall, blonde aliens, two women and a man. She never mentioned any aggression from the aliens or being experimented on. Instead, the aliens provided her with information. She mentioned that they explained to her that center of energy is in Africa and God is a universal energy not a person. We'll hear a little bit of her story in a second here, um, but basically it's just what Jason read. I mean, she's saying things that I kind of agree with. As I've gotten out of my early religion that I was raised in, you know, I still look at the universe as wonderful, amazing, big. I don't know. I don't know about the universal energy part, but it's certainly not just maybe a person. It could be people. It could be an organization of energy that kind of manages the universe. That's actually something that a lot of people kind of subscribe to anyways like i don't think you need an alien to tell you that however it would make sense that an alien would tell you that and on top of that i you know if you are religious and or not we've discovered that the first man kind of came out of africa so again she could have known that anyways but the idea that aliens say hey just so you know on this planet earth the center of energy is in africa i believe it's i understand the man migrated out of africa that eve was well, african so to speak well and also just she's like i was seven years old this is what I felt had happened to me. I'm not here to convince people one way or another. I'm just explaining, just like the way you explained yeah. your story. It either happened or it didn't, and, and my memory and recollection of what I experienced is this. Bettina Rodriguez Aguilera is fighting back against what she calls an attack piece by the Miami Herald. The Miami Herald reported on a television appearance from several years ago where the former uh, mayor of Doral talked about a trip aboard a spaceship, how she met aliens and kept in contact with them over the years. It's an encounter that she wasn't interested in talking about along with any other issue. In a 2009 interview on America TV, Bettina Rodriguez Aguilera described meeting aliens aboard a spaceship, a childhood experience she's not interested in talking about now that she's running for Congress. That I'm just going to keep on focusing on, on the community and what I've done and what I'm doing. And uh, everyone that knows me knows that that what is what I am and that's what I will continue to be doing. In the nine minute clip, Bettina described meeting three blonde beings that resembled the Christ the Redeemer statue in Rio de Janeiro. Bettina said the encounter first reported on by the Miami Herald is being used to make fun of her and discredit her candidacy. She's running in the GOP primary to fill the seat being left open by Congresswoman Ileana ross Leighton. It, it ignores to mention the uh, 40 years of dedication to the community okay, that I have so had as a talks business about her, How the piece is used to slander her story, to like her slander her ability to think rationally as a government constituent. And she's not the only government constituent we have on this list, by the way. It's interesting that she's like, you know what? This happened to me. I understand people want to talk about it now because I'm running for a political position. But she's also, I'm, I don't want to talk about it, but I don't want to deny it either because it's got nothing to do with my ability to lead. Yeah, All right. fair enough. All right, there she is. So the next one is Michelle Marie. She talks about a UFO encounter that she had at the Alaska Pacific University. It caused her some memory loss. So this happened to her 30 years ago, and it was through some hypnosis or regression. If I have actually have read a few books and on hypnotic regression. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Hypnotic regression, yeah. Where basically a hypnosis person will put somebody under and they will remember not only their past life, but they actually remember past lives that they've lived. It's it's fascinating. There's actually some really good books on that. If the person who's under hypnosis is lying, there's some really great storytellers out there that are paying money. See, the thing is to, to go under hypnosis, to go under, you actually have to pay money to the person giving the hypnosis. So think about it. This is why I kind of, it's a very interesting field of study because it's the patient who's paying, it's like three to $400 an hour. Like it's 250 to $300 an hour to be put under. And then, of course, your session is recorded and it's given to you. Imagine paying $300 an hour and just then you're my hypnosis. So, Jason, I'm going to pay you $300 so I can talk to you about my crib experience. It does, and you're an audience of one. Take it for what it's worth. It's a real thing that people do and pay money for to go under 
to talk about their past life and again past lives. It's a fascinating study at the very least. Anyway, so this is such a person. She didn't talk about a past life, but she talked about something that happened to her 30 years ago. So during that session, session I, now we're seeing it on YouTube. I kind of question if that's the actual session we're seeing live. It might be a recreation, but it's the, it's the same players. But that being said, she went outside to have a smoke and she remembers randomly looking up at the sky, you know, looking around and noticing a large black object covered with lights and an unfamiliar language was written on the craft. So it was close enough to her that she could read some sort of writing on the craft. And she mentioned she would never have known that it was there because it was silent had she not looked up. Shell is coming to me today about an incident that happened to her in 1991. One, two, and three. Be there now. There was something black coming towards my friend's dorm. The corner of that craft had aligned with the corner of the building. And I thought it was going to land. I thought it was going to make contact with the building. Did it have a sound? No sound. If I didn't look up, I never would have seen it. Can you describe what it looked like? It was a, like a box. And there was all kinds of grooves that went all along the walls and underneath. And they crossed each other, these grooves, and it was almost like a map. And then, Shell shocks herself with what she remembers next. I think there was language on there. There was some kind of language on there. I can't tell what kind of writing that is. Did you feel like what or whoever was in there was aware that you were there? Yes. That's not a human. Do you feel even now any kind of fear? I don't know what they're doing here. What kind of feeling does that give you? Frightened. This often happens in cases of past regression. Just so you know, I've, I've done a lot of reading, studying on, on this. Is when the person in the chair or whoever is under hypnosis, of course, they will relive whatever they will. They'll cry out of pain or fear or joy or happiness. They'll relive those moments, and when they wake up, they don't even remember what they did. So uh, she remembers being afraid, obviously. And often, when you're in past or when you're under hypnosis, you will remember details. Like she's now seen the writing. She's seen things that she'd forgotten, but her brain is still holding information of. Yeah, interesting. And what I like about the story, too, is nothing too fantastic other than the fact that she saw an object that she felt like they're looking at me and they know that I'm looking at them and I don't think it's of this world. <laughs> and she starts to get a little, a little bit panicky. Yeah, sounds like a fair, reasonable experience. Really, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, it, they're not really advertising this it doesn't appear to be for any other reason than to tell their story. Hey, you could argue they probably got a little pittance to be on that whatever. That oh, sure, to show. be on the show. But I wouldn't go on a show like this with my name unless I believe what I was saying, if that makes sense. Like, at the very least, like you can make fun of me, but if I don't believe it, I'm not going on it. Yeah. Okay, third one is, it's the one that's uh, Dale Snipes. So Dale Snipes is an, the author of 78 Years of UFOs has experienced alien encounters since he was a child. The most terrifying encounter was at 3 a.m. when an alien tried to take her against her will. On the show UFO Witness, she told investigators that she woke up to a strange sound coming from the kitchen. Soon after, an alien appeared in her room and communicated with her telepathically. He had great big eyes, little tiny mouth. I felt fear. The description matches that of a star person who are believed to be able to communicate telepathically. And he said he wanted to show me something, would I come with him? And I, I didn't want to. I started praying, you know, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And uh, I'm not too sure what to do, because it's kind of scary. I didn't really want to go with him. So I reached over to wake my husband up, and as you can see, I have some pretty good nails. And I'm actually digging my nails into his arm. Uh, I couldn't get him to wake up, and that was scary. He's not responding at all. And I'm trying to wake him up, and the, the being said, I want you to come with me. When I woke up the next morning, 
my husband looks over at me and he said, what was going on last night? And I said, you're not gonna believe this. And he said, well, I know something happened. Look at my arm. And he showed me his arm and he actually had blood where I had scratched him hard enough to cause him to bleed. All right, so that's basically her story here, and I th- her book is called. So talking about maybe something to sell, <laughs> she might she might have something to sell. Her book, folks, if you want to buy it, it's called <laughs> 78 Years of UFOs." So I think she's had visits throughout her life from the star people. I mean, this story. Now we're getting to a little bit of the territory where I don't know how convinced I am. Maybe if I had to pick out of the three, this might be the the least convincing. We'll see. There's whole there's holes in all these stories, but obviously there's something in her room or kitchen from her kitchen to her bedroom say come follow me i want to show you something <laughs> you know and her husband wouldn't wake up now they're a little bit older and maybe he was just a heavy sleeper which is possible people do sleep through a lot of stuff but you know he's been scratched from her like digging her arm you know her arms are digging into him it's like you know wake up honey wake up and he doesn't wake up but you could argue that these aliens maybe have the power to keep people knocked out that they want knocked out that which is actually has happened other story encounters where people you know the witness is awake but nobody else is and then people could argue well you're just dreaming then but again if the story is actually true that her husband was bleeding from scratches it's it is odd at the very least he didn't wake up from being scratched like most of us would have woken up from that kind of so you could argue well well, he was out because the aliens put him out if the aliens could communicate with her telepathically they could probably also telepathically make somebody immobile unresponsive you know, short circuit their brain or in some way that, so it's obviously possible given her the benefit of the doubt, but he did wake up about like what happened last night. I'm bleeding. I don't know. Yeah. She might've been, not have been telling the story very well, but he could have said, well, you know, wow, you did scratch me. That's weird that I didn't wake up to that. And she explains, well, because I was visited by a star person. Is that what she called the star person? Is what they're called? Uh, star people star people <laughs> all right yeah yeah okay so there you go that was dale snipes being told uh, the alien wanted to show her something in the kitchen <laughs> you know if i was an alien i think i would be a little bit more okay this person's not responding to my request to follow me you think there'd be some sort of like hey look i know you're scared it's weird that those conversations don't happen like do you think the alien would say look i get it it's a lot to take in i'm from a different planet you're scared out of your mind. You're digging into your husband's arms. Stop doing that. You're going to hurt him when he wakes up. You think they would be smart enough to communicate that? I know the recreation, the dramatic recreation that added the yeah. sound effects and the tense music. But if this truly, let's just pretend this really happened and an alien star person was talking to Dale. Why wouldn't the star person say, hey, this is a lot to take in. I get it. I come in peace. That's why we have that phrase. I, I'm not here to hurt you. It's weird how it's just like, Either her story is a little bit full of holes, but there, or there's more dialogue going on, or she doesn't even remember the conversation. Who knows? No, you're right. I mean, the conversation is very you think clunky. intergalactic <laughs> intelligent beings could be a little bit better at communicating their intentions. Intentions, yeah. We talk to our dogs that way. Like your dog is scared. It's okay, honey. It's okay. It, you can come out. You can come. You know, like we do that as yeah. humans to our dogs. You think that these greater beings would be better at communicating? Well. Speaking of better at communicating, my goodness gracious, well, this next story, they certainly did communicate their intentions to, this one is fascinating. Okay, the woman's name is Angelia Schultz. Look for this on YouTube, okay? She goes by the name of, well, she doesn't go by the name. She was given this name by the greater beings, Anne Jolly, or Anjali, like Anjali. So it's almost the same as her name, but she has a... She was given an, a new name by the aliens. This video is weird. So she too was a Democrat. So we had a Republican, now we have a Democrat candidate for South Dakota Senate and Secretary of State in 2014. She's just a, she's actually just a year older than you, Jason. But this was in 2014, so she would have been uh, 40 here, 41 years old she's well spoken she doesn't sound crazy but this whole video is crazy if that makes sense she's outside lincoln memorial in washington dc this is during the COVID time so this was in august of 2021 she's holding a press conference and it's like an hour and a half long so obviously we can't play the whole clip i could almost go anywhere in the clip and we could just hear some of the stuff because i want you to hear it. but so she met a couple people at a southern california coffee shop 
two humans who eventually showed her the location of an alien base. She didn't reveal during this conference exactly where in the Mojave Desert she went in January of 2010, but she said that the man she met had excavated a tunnel on the side of a mountain. She said a bright light guided them to the secret alien base. She remembered seeing aliens with lavender skin and one that looked like a praying mantis. The conversations with the aliens were through telepathy. And during this press conference, she stated that she planned to go back with other individuals as of today. There's still no confirmation if she ever went back to this secret base. When you listen to this, either she has completely lost her marbles, which is absolutely the case, but she gives this huge account and she comes off almost a little bit defensive in some parts, which would be understandable. What I love too, she has this guy, this handler behind her. Let's, look at this guy that stands behind her. So he's set up his, I think this is her husband here to the left. Oh, and I should know she's in a wheelchair and I Googled, why is she in a wheelchair? Like, I didn't understand why it was, she's in a, and I don't know if she's just in a wheelchair to be comfortable during the hour and a half, but she looks like she's in a wheelchair, which is uh, irrelevant, but if she went to the cave. I don't know if I had wheelchair access. <laughs> I don't know why she's in a wheelchair now. She's only like 41 or two. Actually, sorry, in this video, sorry, in this video is 2021. So that was just two years ago. So, so right now she's fit. Okay. So she's about 47 here. My bad. I'm sorry. But when she had this encounter, she was in her late thirties, early forties. Okay. Which makes sense. She looks, yeah, she looks like she's 47, 48. So she sent up her computer okay. with her notes and everything. Almost ready to go. But this guy behind her, he just stands there the whole time, doesn't say anything. It's weird. Okay. So her, hear her start her conversation here. We could almost do a whole video on this one. We're getting, okay. we're getting everybody connected. Okay, great. Can you just say... Okay, so she's live streaming. She's saying we're getting everyone connected. So she's live streaming this as well as, you know, to whoever. I don't know where this was live streamed. Say something. Say hello. Oh. Say hello. Project, could you project how you'll be speaking a little bit? Okay. So we can oh, I'm in our high school in Jacksonville, Florida, that has since been renamed as West Side High. Thank goodness. I graduated from high so school. So she gives her life story a little bit. Kind of like her credentials. She's saying, hey, look, I'm not a nutcase. She kind of deflects the future criticisms that would come her way. Like, why are you doing this? Because she talks about she is going to release a book. Of a, a cutting edge technology. Every day. Our information environment is changing right before our eyes. And as it's changing, one of the things that we're seeing is a coalescence of lack of information clarity and grassroots movements demanding more understanding, more transparency everywhere in the world. 2016, I resigned my position after sitting in a meeting and having difficulty cognitively following the pace of the discussion. I took my work very seriously and any signs whatsoever of a memory disruption or an illness that was affecting me at that moment, I knew that the only choice that I had was to, ex to, to submit a resignation effective immediately. And that is what I did. But we're gonna get into the crux here of what she sees. So she goes to the mountain, we hear a little bit of the message of the mountain. She yeah, resigned from her job. She can't function as a human anymore almost because of the information she received. That looks like a very beautiful praying mantis. A mantis. I wish nothing more than for the outcome of all of this to be for you to see the beauty in the faces that I saw that day. There are beings of light that Literally, when you look at them, it is like there is just a membrane that encapsulates a humanoid form. You can't see through it. It's not transparent. It's light. It's there. She believes it. Whatever that is. And she goes on to say they gave him some information. I can go anywhere. Well, let's just hear a little bit of what they gave her. That was the last part. Where? Been where we are. Oh, there you go. They've been where we are. She looks she's remembering. And they have been guardians of our process. When every form of consciousness coalesces back into the pure light, it remembers fully. The stuff she's actually saying, again, a lot of past life hypnosis stories have actually, they tie into what she's saying. The idea being that we will return to a greater consciousness or the idea being that this earth life is, is a stepping stone to knowledge understanding growth and we just kind of keep at it till we get it 
essentially. Hour and 15 minutes, folks. She talked about this and she believes what now has she gone crazy? I don't know. It's odd though. This whole thing's very odd. <laughs> Lincoln Memorial, she's got her handlers. She's got this weird blanket over top of her wheelchair. This looks like a magical, like a magician's blanket. So it is a lot to get through. Obviously, we can't show a lot. But her again, her name is Angelia Schultz, also known as Angela or Angela. It's A-N with that hyphen thing over top of the N. J-A-L-I. And that was the name. In fact, her video, go to Reddit. She does a Q&A on Reddit as well. And it's kind of fascinating. The aliens gave her the name? Yes. It's eerily similar to Angel. Well, that might just be her alien name, meaning like, to the and you're Jasani. You'd be Jasani. And that would be Rioni. <laughs> All right. um, she does talk about a cognitive decline, that may maybe she's got like multiple screws. She might. So maybe some neurons condition. are not quite connecting. Again, uh, somewhat of a credible background. Yeah, she was in government so. and yeah. she resigned. And uh, the live chat was on during this video too, which is kind of fun to watch. And so right here, people are saying, warning, this woman is schizophrenic and was dishonorably discharged from the military, which, again, mm -hmm. could be true. But then how did she get the job in government afterwards? That's all. Um, it's just fun. People are saying, hey, I understand everything she's saying. And someone else says, everything she's saying resonates with me. You guys are just being super close-minded. Like, why still watch if you think she's crazy? Then, of course, there's some funny comments. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's interesting. It's very interesting. At the very least, go, uh, go look at the comments. The aliens are laughing in the background. All right. Erica in our chat, uh, she's cooking. She's cooking as she's listening to our show. So thanks, Erica. She said she had a ghost or alien experience when she was about six, but she can't tell which one of, if it was ghost or you know paranormal or a physical alien. And it didn't scare her, so she doesn't think it's a ghost or tend to think it was a ghost because it did. So you're you're saying Erica that you're would be more afraid of an alien than a ghost. Okay, good stuff. Dan is here as well. Dan, how you doing? Okay. So remember, at the end of the episode, guys, you can tell us what you think is the least credible story as we go through these. So I think I've heard of this lady, and this is, seems to be very similar to a lot of different people in the military. So she's, uh, according to her, she goes, I hope I'm not the UFO tic-tac person for the rest of my life. This is not what I envisioned for myself. Lieutenant Commander Alex Dietrich was quoted saying after talking about her UFO encounter on 60 Minutes. In November 2004, Dietrich observed a UFO hovering over the ocean while training with colleagues. The UFO moved at speeds beyond anything she had seen before. She never claimed to see an alien or gave any indication of what she thought it was. Just simply an unidentified tic-tac-shaped object. Nothing less, nothing more. Dietrich never mentioned having an interest in UFOs and didn't entertain the idea or thought of it being more than what she saw. And what uh, makes her, of course, credible is is her position in the military, not just her position in the military, but where she's physically located <laughs> in the sky. Yeah, I hope I'm not the uh, the UFO tic-tac person <laughs> for the rest of my life. Uh, this is not what I envisioned for myself. But for UFO believers, the forthcoming report and Dietrich's sighting is the subject of much speculation and skepticism Part of the reason why the former fighter pilot said she feels she has a duty and an obligation to inform the public about what she saw. We noticed something in the water uh, that seemed to be disturbing the water or, or making it churn. We were able to then visually pick up uh, what we describe as a tic-tac uh, because that's what it looked like, this white oblong uh, shaped object that was moving very fast. Uh, and then Commander Fravor pulled a maneuver to uh, try to get some angles on it. It appeared to respond uh, in a way that we didn't recognize. It surprised us because it didn't appear to have any visible flight control surfaces or means of propulsion. Dietrich, now a mother of three, served aboard the USS Nimitz. The video recording of what she and her then commanding officer David Fravor saw off the coast of Southern California in November 2004 will be part of the upcoming government report along with two other declassified videos shot aboard U.S. Navy fighter jets, <laughs> including the so-called Go Fast video released a few years ago. I recognized that. It's, <laughs> the first time I watched it, I said, oh, yeah, <laughs> that was just like us. Dietrich said she has no opinion on the report, which is due to be released by the end of June, but she said UFO enthusiasts anticipating big revelations about unexplained sightings 
might be disappointed with the findings. I have a feeling that folks who are anticipating the release will not find satisfaction. I don't know. I haven't seen it. I, I'm not looped in. Okay, so she doesn't know quite what it is, but it's interesting, Jason, as of course Jason and I are watching this uh, again. I'm going to see if I can get this episode on our YouTube so people can watch this on YouTube as well on our channel on YouTube. It looks just like the objects that have just been recently shot down. <laughs> yeah, there's that. And then there's also who she is with. He was on Joe Rogan, a oh. favors guy, a year or two ago talking about, and I've heard him more than her. He's talked about his experiences on Nimitz and, and how his interactions with other people on boats. I think it's off of the kind of San Diego area, off the coast there, in that area, in that region. They witnessed them going in and out of the ocean. Yeah. It sounds like a very credible She's story. the most credible person on our list so far. So I, she's my pick for least. <laughs> right. And the fact that it's co- or the uh, best. collaborated with other military pilots, yeah. military people that are on those ships. And the favors guy, he goes in much more detail on his Joe Rogan interview. Okay, cool. And this, then here we are, coincidentally. Yeah. <laughs> Today's, yeah, in 2023, we're... UFOs are everywhere. People are catching them on. Like, I've seen the cell phone footage. People are filming something in the sky, and they look just like those Tic Tacs, don't they? Mm. That's weird. All right. Again, is it alien life form? I don't know. But what are they? It's, nobody's claiming it. I really hope we get some data on what those things are. And then again, do we believe what gets released? Okay. So this next one's a little bit interesting. Uh, this one's a little bit different than the ones we've heard so far. Her name is Geraldine... Orozco, I'm probably not saying her name right. I apologize to Geraldine. One too many times, Geraldine would become pregnant and then have a miscarriage weeks later. So more than once this would happen to her, which miscarriages are a horrible thing. Nothing to make fun of there. Each time there was never a fetus found, however. So she'd have the miscarriage, no longer pregnant, but there was no fetus to be found. The cause remained a mystery even when seeking medical advice. And that was until she was taken into an alien spacecraft in October of 2013. She recalled... Her body feeling paralyzed as she was surrounded by tall gray beings. And in the craft, she mentions seeing her children. Yeah. yeah, She remembers noticing that they were were part human mixed with alien DNA. And ever since that incident in October 2013, she uh, started a support group for other women who experienced having their baby stolen from the womb for experiments. Geraldine claims that aliens actually presented her to her alien human children. This being is, show me these children. And as I'm looking at these children and I see what they look like, they're not all the way human. This gray, thin skin to a much bigger head. And these giant eyes that are so deep and so profound and so complex. It was just incredible, but what I recognized as I'm meeting the child is that it's my child. It looks like me. It has something that is a part of me. At this moment, Geraldine realized why she could never get pregnant. She believed she wasn't having miscarriages. Her unborn children were being stolen from her womb and mutated with alien DNA. I have been a UFO alien enthusiast my whole life. I really got deep into the since 90s. About two, since about two years old. Yeah, since I was about two yeah, years yeah, old, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little call back to my story at the beginning. But I've always been fascinated by people's stories because I thought I had one or think I have one. I don't know what it is, right? So when you have a story, you're like, am I crazy? And then when you hear other people's stories, you're like, okay, there's some sort of shared experience. But then you hear some stories, you're like, I don't know now. Now I was like, maybe I am. I? So I hear this. But in the realm of craziness, I don't know. Like, we as humans, have we not tried to get you know, a dog and pig mixed up? I, I don't know. Like, it's not crazy crazy, but at the same time, the idea that she's an incubator for alien babies is... you think they'd be able to figure out another way of doing that. I don't know. Maybe they really need our bodies to mix with theirs. I don't know. She was a immaculate conception of alien baby. <laughs> I I'm going to go in a very different direction. Sure. And I will try to say this as respectfully as possible. And I might be going completely off the rails on this. Is she having a disconnect with getting rid of her own fetuses? And that's her story of not that she's even having miscarriages per se, but maybe getting pregnant and getting rid of the baby. And then that's her explanation as to why she doesn't have the babies that she was. She comes up with this elaborate kind of idea to explain away 
right. multiple pregnancies. And- Maybe she's anti-abortion, but she does it, and then her she creates her own narrative of what happened to the beauty. Yeah. yeah, I watched hers, and I I didn't feel very convinced by her story, and she doesn't really seem upset that she's like these are my children. I know, you know what I mean? Like it's just like maybe she feels honored and blessed to be part of a greater narrative, a greater purpose. I don't know. I feel like there's a disconnect between her telling the story of her children that she's watching. I don't know. Okay. All right. Yeah. Is that is that a weird explanation? No, is no, that, that's, that's dark, very Is that a dark? Is that no. a, maybe going a little bit dark? I, at, I don't know. I At the end of the day I we could be dealing with men- by her. Oh, sorry. Uh I just wasn't very convinced by her and I didn't feel she was very connected to talking about her children. That's fair. fair Are we argument. talking about you doing things while you were pregnant to get rid of your babies and now this is your story to explain it away? Fair enough. At the end of the day, every single one of these encounters, mine included, could be just some sort of mental disconnect that our brain creates some sort of narrative that we then feel the need to verbalize. Okay, so this is Jerry Julian. Jerry Julian um, lives on a reservation in New Mexico. The first encounter she remembered was when she was sitting outside and saw a craft fly from behind a mountain. She said the craft descended from the sky to approach where she was sitting. Later that night, two small people tried to force her out of bed. She recalled she couldn't scream or do anything. Eventually, the disturbed people left her alone. Basically, she saw a craft in the mountains, went to bed, and two tiny people tried to drag her her out of bed. I think this happened, obviously. She's quite old in this video, but I think she's recounted a story from when she was younger, of course. And it went back on top of Archlera Mountain to where the, the hole is, that way. The hole? What's the hole? There's a hole on the other side of the Archlera Mountain. You got a hole in it, or do you mean that it's actually open? They made it. Whoever it is, they made it. Wow. But this is not the end of Jerry's story. That night, the beings came back, and this time, she saw them up close. At my house, at night, I woke up while it was dark in my room. There were two small people, they were trying to pull me off the bed and I couldn't scream. And she has a specific name for her would-be abductors. The star people. I was holding onto the mattress down here and they were trying to pull me off. And then my husband like moved and then they let me go. Wow. And then all day the next day, I couldn't get it off my mind. What if they come again tonight? What if they really take me? They're the star people. The write-up that we read, I think it's mislabeled. I think she's saying star people the same way that one of the previous... Yeah. They yeah. misheard her as saying disturbed people because of her accent. Her. Oh. Yeah, it's okay. funny. She's saying the star people. So it's interesting. This Jerry is saying the exact same thing that a previous woman said unrelated to each other. They both revealed them as star people. So... Again, they're sharing stories on the internet with each other, or why are they referring to them the same name? It's a simple name, but it's interesting that two unrelated people by both by culture, nationality, one of them try to get, forget her name, Dale, out of bed uh, to come to the kitchen, but these two try to physically grab her, both with her husbands, funny enough. Mm. Interesting. It is interesting. She sounds convincing to me. Yeah. All right. Jason, uh, I've got the next one here. This is Jane. Now, Jane is no stranger to having alien encounters. She told of her encounters to uh, the news. This is what she said. In 73, she mentioned being abducted by five aliens. Then in the 80s, she mentioned one day being pregnant. And after a horrible night, she woke up no longer pregnant. So there's another one where she was pregnant, but woke up no longer pregnant. And then years after that, she said a UFO group gathered in uh, Texas, and she remembers seeing a bright white light glaring through every window in the house. She also heard there was a gray alien outside, and by the time she went outside to investigate further, she uh, heard branches snapping and the noise coming from the ship ascending into the air. So she seems to be a bit a combination of, again, people who often think they've had encounters will often not seek them but they continue to chase or gather with other people and then have further encounters so to speak so here's a little bit of her story i want to share the part of her story is so she actually made the news funny enough but i want to share her story to where she talks about the man in black essentially this was well before the films and he was all in black black hat black sunglasses black suit he was probably six foot four 
And no matter what aisle I went down, he uh, would be right store. there. She'd been followed. And then I got some phone calls. Nelm says she told them she will not be silenced. In fact, that's why she's talking to us, wanting others to know. People have to experience stuff for themselves. And it doesn't bother me if, if people don't believe me. All I know is what, what has happened. Perhaps the hardest story to believe is what she says happened to her in the 1980s. My husband and I hadn't had relationships for a while. <laughs> and I was pregnant. Four and a half months pregnant. And uh, everything was fine. You know, I got over the morning sickness and the baby was doing okay. And my husband was out of town. And things were going on, strange things. And uh, I went to bed that night and I thought, things aren't right now. You know, this is not right. I, feel, I, I sense something was near the house, you know, and I didn't know what. So I went to bed pregnant, four and a half months pregnant. And I woke up that morning and I'd had a terrible night, like it was a nightmare, a literal nightmare. And I knew when I woke up that morning that I was no longer pregnant. She believes the aliens took her baby. Now says so she's okay. So Jason, I saw your face during that. Do you want to explain to so, the listeners? So, what yeah. So she isn't having relationships with her husband for right. a while. Her husband's conveniently out of town. She somehow becomes pregnant with no <laughs> relations with her husband. Maybe not her husband. Then, maybe her boss at, at work. <laughs> and then go like, yeah, I'm not gonna go through with this. And conveniently, the aliens took the baby that they impregnated me with. I just find this story, along with that other lady's story about being pregnant and not having babies, and her going like, me and my husband weren't having relations, and then I'm pregnant, the world's crashing in on me, this is becoming real, everything. And then all of a sudden, I had this horrible night, this nightmarish night, and you know, things just didn't seem right, and... And then I woke up and I wasn't pregnant. Never connected those two stories so you, you and I did this together because I've seen all the stories, but now that you brought up that theory, this is... Hers sounds even worse than the other lady. Yeah. She's got a real I... reason to ab to abort yes. the child. <laughs> yes. Before hubby comes home and goes, hey, how come you're pregnant? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And then her explanation to explain it away is this aliens. Interesting. I, I don't know. These stories happen. They just she just using the aliens as an excuse not to be pregnant anymore. That to me just sounds like somebody rationalizing. Yeah, a nightmarish night. We've got two anyway. more to go, and these last two we saved the be I've saved the best for last. Okay, so I've already got a couple picks with the eight that we've done, but I don't know where you're, Jay. You're gonna have a hard time picking the worst one with these last two. So Jay, do you want to go over uh, <laughs> Lily Nova? Lily Nova's alien encounters didn't start as a child. Her encounters didn't even start with her searching for aliens. The COVID-19 pandemic in Missouri shifted her interest in astrophotography, which led to alien encounters. Her first alien encounter started in November 2020. She mentioned seeing a couple of crafts flying over the neighborhood. The more time she spent outside, the more frequent the encounters became. She stated seeing different aliens, the ones she remembered seeing the most, had a blue complexion. She saw some with glowing skin and blonde hair. Rather than having a physical encounters, the aliens sent many images of themselves through telepathy. I think I've seen her on YouTube. Uh, she has yeah. well, she has like twelve thousand subs. And she's not huge, but she's got a f bit of a following. Her videos got some hits and what have you. But I think I saw her in Danica Patrick's YouTube. You know the oh. Danica Patrick, the car driver. She does. She's got a fairly popular. Um, YouTube following now. Okay. I think she interviewed this girl. The, her deal is, is at least on this video, is she tells you how you can, in three steps or three ways, communicate with the divine. Okay, and on your own, you can I've go look it. it up. So again, her name is Lily Nova. It's called E5, if I remember correctly, the term. I think it's called E5 or something that affects people do this or they claim to do this. This is really kind of out there. What they do is they basically meditate as a group and they have a group collective or a single collective experience communicating literally with like aliens yeah like a seance but the aliens communicate back to them like a conversation it's like basically you open yourself up as a receiver 
And I don't know how personal the information is, but it's like you're just getting, like, you're tuning into alien radio. Okay, and so she tells you how you can connect with the divine. But they, this is one's a little bit of a visual so and audio, so I want, uh, again, people to join our YouTube to see the, the video here. Here's her voice. She's talking about the second way you can communicate. And it's, here's what she says about this experience, though. So. Suddenly, this bird-shaped being just came out of the cloud. And I was actually recording this at the moment. And as that happened, a bunch of orbs shot down from the sun. Let me see it here. And I caught this whole thing on camera. And I felt it. The energy just got very intense. It was honestly like one of my favorite CE5 sessions and experiences CE5. ever. And I caught the whole thing on video. Afterwards, I looked back and realized that all of these orbs had shot down. And I knew that the bird figure that popped up was Lyran, an avian bird being. I've also seen lions in the clouds for my Lyran heritage. The first ET I ever saw, it was a, a woman with light blue skin and no hair. She looked very human. She was very beautiful. And they showed me her face in the clouds and others. So <laughs> so I love that picture there. Just go. <laughs> Sorry. She, show, she shows this picture of a very... Uh, so where is it? A very typical cloud cluster. Yeah, look at this cloud. Uh, they get it here. Watch They showed me her face in the clouds. And <laughs> Looks like my two-year-old's drawing of daddy. <laughs> it's like, look, it's an alien in the clouds. Okay, that's a little ridiculous. Man, if you look for it, you'll find uh, it. Oh this is God. what I've yeah, seen. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> look, honey, I've communicated with the aliens. Look at the clouds. This is where it gets a little ridiculous. Is what I'm saying. She's talking about how. If you look in the clouds, or like uh, I saw a cloud that look at, looks like a lion, which speaks to my lioness orb or whatever. She, I don't know. This gets a little wonky for me. Like, I'm all for alien investigation, but the whole idea that you seance to the aliens, I'm like, okay, let, this one's kooky. This one's this one's going to be a run for the money. Well, then she must be loving the last week. Of course, she'd look how dolled up she is. And yeah. Yeah, I know. A lot of simps out there will be watching her channel. Oh, yeah. I believe you. Okay. This last one. This is from Sharon Gilbert. Do you see the picture of her here? Oh, yes, 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 okay. yes, yes. Oh, I do okay. remember this one. Okay, so <laughs> she will tell her own story. Just bear with us, folks. It is a couple minutes long. It's two minutes long, but it is worth every single... <laughs> <laughs> She's on a religious show. I don't know what the religious show is called. Yeah, it was... Was it... Uh... I can't stress enough people to go on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Jim Baker. Movies. The Jim Baker. Okay. She was the Jim Baker show. You got to like, see the co Jim Baker. Yeah. They got to see the co-host as she tells her story. Even they're like, oh boy, I don't know. Oof. <laughs> but they can't discredit her because it's like, look, we're not trying to dis discredit you, Sharon Gilbert, but let's hear her story. You let us know. After Derek and I got married. Her husband. One night, this other Derek appears in our bed. Mm. The real Derek is lying down next to me. Other Derek sits right up out of him. It startled me. I knew that was not Derek. And so I asked this critter, who are you? Because he clearly wanted to have sexual relations. <laughs> Okay, stop, 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 stop. I gotta find, I, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, what's happening so far? First thing that comes to my mind is, you forgot you were participating in a threesome. <laughs> or, <laughs> who invited Derek's twin brother? Why is twin, why is Derek's or, twin brother? Or Derek <laughs> got caught with a lover in their bed, and she comes to bed, and they're like. <laughs> it was one of the parishioners, it was one of the parishioners was there. Yes, see, this is like the other Ladies, they get themselves in a situation they know they shouldn't be particip participating in. And so they explain it away with this elaborate story of how to be aliens. Look, but, participating in this. But what I love is the other Derek pops up. So her husband's lying down, but this yes. almost like a spirit. You know, in the movies, they pop out. And so this other Derek... But Hey, honey, you want to have relations? No. And she calls it a critter. She's like, oh, who are you? Who are you? Look at this guy's face after he hears what she just said. Look at his. He's doing all he can to bite his So Look because, at that. You know why? Because he knows her husband, Derek, and what Derek does. <laughs> behind closed doors. <laughs> behind closed doors. Yeah. He was hiding under the covers. Okay, let's hear that again. I want to hear the big reveal. And then we'll, we'll finish the story. Because he clearly wanted to have sexual relations. 
he clearly wanted to have how how's that clear was he <laughs> <laughs> he was naked he was yeah was the other derek naked was he sporting wood already like what was he doing the gropey gropey with his hands like, <laughs> like how is it clearly indicated like maybe he was just looking for the bathroom <laughs> it was a star it was a star people telepathy yeah telepathy yeah star people and he said come on i'm your husband i said who are you and he had the nerve to claim to be Ahasuerus, Xerxes. Well, other Derek seriously wanted to invite me to use my free will to do something that was going to pull me away from God. I'm going to have to edit this, but what was it? <laughs> <laughs> Brian, Brian, she got caught. She she was invited to participate in a in, yes in a threesome. In a threesome. Yeah, it was a threesome. And then she got. She's like, no, no, I can't do this. This is a. Th- and I this know. is her way, in case the story gets out. Oh. It's a preemptive thing. Okay, good theory, boy. You're coming to, through. To ex- through. Yeah, okay, yeah. Theory. This is these Keith. are people that are caught in sin. So this last <laughs> time, I knew. He was really desperate. And I asked him again, who are you? He told me the same answer. And I said, I'm not going with you. This was an internal dialogue. Finally, I said, I've had enough in my mind. I reached up. I grabbed his face. And I said, you are a liar. And Jesus is real. And I pulled that face off. And beneath it was a reptile. This reminds me of the end of every Scooby-Doo episode. <laughs> Let's see who the culprit really is. It's it's the lizard alien from the planet of Xerxes. <laughs> and I would have gotten away with it, too, if it wasn't for you meddling preacher's wife. <laughs> this is insane. Okay. And he had little creatures with him this time. He brought these little halfling creatures, and they looked like, I don't know, gargoyles. So we've turned this threesome into a full-on... <laughs> Orgy with halflings. <laughs> he brought the halfling party with him. They came. Where did, where did they pop out of the drawers? <laughs> you know, the drawers just out of the stuffed, bed. The stuffed animals. <laughs> this is amazing. Halfling creatures, and they looked like, I don't know, gargoyles. They were very reptilian as well. So beneath that face of Derek was a reptilian serpentine creature, probably similar to what was visiting the Anasazi. Wow. Well, the Bible says. <laughs> well, yeah, the Bible like says. Guy, he's like, I like the. Wow, completely yeah. ignores what she said. And he's like, let's get back to the yeah. Bible. Well, I love it. Yeah, the guy's like, okay, back to the Bible. I mean, this is crazy. Let's get back to the crazy Bible. You know, this is a little less crazy. Okay. <laughs> they, they wanted nothing to do with her after that story. They had nothing to build. How, what are you at? Okay, look, I obviously have my pick for worse. Let us know in the chat, folks, what you thought was the worst story out of all those. I'd be curious to hear those few that are still here. Uh, we've got Ala054 is with us, Erica and Dan. Thanks for joining us, guys. I kind of cheated because it's not very often when we do our lists. I try to make it sporadic, like make the worst somewhere in the middle-ish maybe or whatever because I don't know what your pick's going to be. But again, the criteria for this episode is which story is the least credible. <laughs> like if you had to convince somebody that aliens were truly real, which one would you present to some, to a skeptic? And I, of course, have my pick. And I, I admit, so obviously it's the last one. It was too good to share, or sorry, to, at the beginning, I wanted to end on that because it was the, it's the best story I've heard in a long time. So of those 10 stories, that was the least credible. <laughs> Even our two cohorts were like, oof, <laughs> I can't. The guy, the guy sitting right beside her, he was like biting his tongue. Well, he was, embarrassed, he was embarrassed to be next to her. Can we edit myself out of this episode? <laughs> he just went, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow, indeed. So that's my pick, Jason, for the worst. It's hard to argue <laughs> that that can't not be the worst. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't convince me that there's aliens at all. That convinces me that you're a delusional in your explanation of something that you participated in that you realize you didn't want to participate in. <laughs> What's unfortunate is I shared my story at the beginning, right? Yeah. And it's a fantastic, you know, uh, out of this world or unbelievable story. But when people like her or that lady, the Lincoln Memorial is another one, when they share their stories, 
it makes my story like less credible because you have these legitimately crazy people or you know, maybe yeah, not yeah, mentally yeah. stable schizophrenic type people giving these stories with such vigor and they feel they're telling the truth that when i tell my story people are like are you nuts too ryan are you crazy like no like <laughs> so that's your pick too uh, erica in our chat she she chimed in she goes definitely the last one she goes on to say that almost all the stories that have such complex and strange details comes off as untrue versus the ones that just yeah. seem simple or more yeah. real to uh, that's a, yes exactly i agree with that. yeah that lady that uh kind of a set close second the one that it kind of bothers me is that, that L- lady lily that, nova that, no oh i mean she's just she's just a uh Kind of a, like a hippie sort of speak woo, of a, yeah, yeah, woo woo, you know. <laughs> what with the universe? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. yeah, you know, gemstones speak to me. Yeah, um, she probably uses essential oils. <laughs> the one that really bothered me was the lady that said that her husband wasn't around and she oh, found yeah. herself pregnant and then not pregnant four months later. That one really bothers me because I, I really feel like something nefarious went on. Very yucky happened mm. to her baby. That's fair. I I think I'm in complete agreement with you. Uh, the other nine, yeah, I feel like that's a cover up story to something else that happened. To, to me, it very it sounds yeah. like a very much of a cover up story that I'm. That was an absolutely fun episode. I agree with you. So yeah, often we'll have one or two picks. You know, one was horribly obvious. That's why I saved for last. But yeah, I think that, it... that that one is <laughs> obvious. Like, as far as convincing somebody that there is a UFOs, yeah. that's not the story to start with. We want to thank everyone who joined us on our Discord. Again, let me just plug, we do have a Discord. You can join us live, watch us live. I think I'm going to try to get this one up on our very little, very small YouTube channel. But uh, I think it would be fun to get this one on the YouTube channel because of all the videos. Uh, but uh, listen to us on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you find podcasts. We're available everywhere. Uh, we're going to try to roll some more episodes. Christmas time, got a little bit busy. Uh, we're going to try to roll some more episodes. Uh, again, send us an email. Let us know what topic you might uh, like us to discuss. So you look at previous episodes, see what we've discussed, and see what we talk about. Let us know if you want us to, to cover a certain topic. Rate and review us on iTunes. That's very free. It's easy to do. It does help us a little bit. Again, remember, in front of every silver lining, there's a cloud. And today it was... The preacher's wife who didn't want to have a threesome with her husband and all the alien <laughs> goblins with him. 